I'm not playing it. I'm not playing the clip. Everybody always just uses the It's Showtime clip. There's some other memorable lines in this movie. Nice f***ing models! Yeah, like that. Beetlejuice. So Beetlejuice came out in 1988 and is really the perfect movie for Tim Burton to direct. It's not really based on anything unless you count Orion's armpit, but this allows Tim Burton to do what he does best, and that's do something creative and new. And he does exactly that with Beetlejuice. There is not another film, even within Tim Burton's filmography, that has the same look, production design, and tone as Beetlejuice. And while the idea of a haunted house movie is nothing new, I mean, Poltergeist just did it a few years earlier exceptionally well. You see, most haunted house movies tend to be horror movies. They're supposed to scare and excite and thrill the audience. But Beetlejuice is a comedy. And not just that, but it's a comedy from the point of view of the ghosts. And that was a fresh take in 1988. But like any good comedy, the cast has to be funny. And this cast does a really good job at it. Of course, you have the recently deceased who we follow throughout the majority of this movie, played by Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis, and they do a good job in this movie at bringing a likability and a warmth to this weird and bizarre world Tim Burton's crafted. They're a sweet couple, and you are kind of sad that they did die so early in the movie, because they had a pretty good life ahead of them. And if we're talking about their death scene, it's played so nonchalantly. They just hop in a car to go to town and when they're crossing the bridge a dog comes out in front of them, they swerve to miss it, and they crash into the river. And that may seem exciting, but it's shot as just another Tuesday and you see them walk back to the house and we're not really sure as the audience if they actually died or not or just wrecked the car. And it's not until the fireplace goes up and we see the handbook for the recently deceased that we start putting the pieces together that maybe they are dead. But also in this movie, you have the Dietzes who move into the house after this couple died. And they consist of Catherine O'Hara as the mother, Delia, Jeffrey Jones as the father, Charles, and their daughter, Lydia, played by Winona Ryder. And this family cracks me up, specifically the two parents. Delia is this eccentric, avant-garde sculptor and designer. And Charles looks like he was plugged right out of a 50s sitcom. He's laid back, he just wants peace and quiet and order in his house. And seeing the two of them bicker and go at it is just hilarious. But if I had to pick a weak spot in this movie, it really is Lydia. And while I do respect Tim Burton for trying to expand his characterizations of women, in fact in this movie alone we've got three very distinct female characters that take up a lot of screen time. But Lydia just comes off as the same moody, angsty, goth teen that we've seen a million times. And aside from the fact that she can see ghosts, there's really nothing all that interesting about her character. But God knows it's still better than Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. But how could I forget the titular character character, Beetlejuice himself, played by Michael Keaton. I would say main character because his name is on the title, but surprisingly he's not in the movie all that much. I would say the main characters are Alec Baldwin and Gina Davis, but when he is on screen, Michael Keaton brings it 100%. This may be my favorite role of his. He plays this character so different from what you would expect a character like this to be. In fact, if you look at what popular culture and other adaptations have turned the Beetlejuice character into, that's not the character that Michael Keaton portrays at all. Is he a fast talker? Yes. Is he kind of eccentric and weird? Yes. Does he make a lot of jokes? Of course he does. This is a comedy after all. But the thing with Keaton's Beetlejuice is that he's a really bad guy. He is, in essence, the true villain of this story. Yes, the Dietzes are antagonists to Adam and Barbara throughout most of this movie, but Beetlejuice really is a scumbag. He's vulgar, he's perverted, he's rude, he's completely selfish. That's not the kind of character you want to just slap on a lunchbox or put on a Saturday morning cartoon. He's the undead equivalent of a used car salesman. He'll say whatever he needs to to get what he wants. But how's the story to Beetlejuice? Well, in Tim Burton fashion, it is incredibly simple. We've got a couple that just recently died and they're trying to figure out the whole afterlife situation. When a new family moves in and they just start completely remodeling the house and they go to a bio exorcist named Beetlejuice to help. But then of course things go out of hand. Beetlejuice reveals his true colors, that he's not the kind of guy they want to be hanging around with. The couple befriend Lydia in the process. After a big final showdown with Beetlejuice, the family and the couple come to an understanding about the house and they all lived happily ever after. Or I guess they haunted happily ever after. They're not alive. Just 
thought I'd make that clear. So yeah, the story's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but what makes it so good is that Tim Burton does what he does best and he takes a very straightforward story, takes some of the ideas in it and pulls at them. For instance, the idea of the waiting room of the dead. How creative a set piece is that? It's fascinating. You have all these people sitting in a waiting room with individual makeup jobs that show without any words necessary exactly how that person died. But it doesn't stop there. Davis and Baldwin try these different mutilations, for lack of a better word, to try to scare away the family. But of course it doesn't work because they can't see him anyway. But these visuals of the face ripping off, the face extending into a mouth, Alec Baldwin's severed head, the weird fleshy spy versus spy snout. I'm telling you, Tim Burton and his production team were putting in overtime on these designs. They are some of the most out there creative designs that I've ever seen in a haunting movie. And why not? You're a ghost. You're not limited to flesh and bone. You're a spirit in essence, so you can make yourself look like whatever. And of course, Beetlejuice himself, having a lot more experience in this type of thing, takes us to the nth degree when he turns himself into a pretty terrifying stop motion snake and this carnival thing from hell. And that's not even mentioning the sandworms. Seriously, what kind of drugs were they on when they designed this movie? Because I haven't seen a ghost movie that looks anything like this. These are some next level designs. But aside from that, this is also the most self-aware that I've seen Tim Burton. Like I've said in my past videos, Tim Burton likes to put himself in his movies, often as an underappreciated outcast that usually has an artistic side. And while a case definitely can be made for Lydia and she does have some of those tropes, I would argue that the character that Tim Burton inserted into this story to represent himself was Delia. She's an avant-garde sculptor who's so passionate about her work that she demands everything be in her style, even her house. The only problem is that nobody really likes her style. And I think this says a lot about Tim Burton as an artist. He often goes for these out-of-the-box creative avant-garde styles that some people like, but some people just find weird. And one of the most common criticisms from myself included is that he favors style over substance. And I think he crafted this character of Delia to kind of make fun of himself in a kind of self-deprecating humorous way. And it is humorous. Delia is one of the most hilarious characters in the movie because she's just so tightly wound and wants to control everything that just the slightest imperfection of her style will make her snap. And there is some good self-referential comedy that comes out of that. And not to read too deeply into this, but I find it interesting that at the end of the movie, when everything's resolved, Delia kind of abandons her style for a more traditional, realistic sculptural style in the head of the snake version of Beetlejuice, which is still plenty weird, but it seems like Tim Burton is trying to get across the idea of a compromise, a merger of style and substance. And I think Beetlejuice is exactly that. It's the perfect amount of story and comedy and jokes with the off the wall creativity that Tim Burton's known for. It's a really strong film that just gets better the more times I watch it. But what did you think about Beetlejuice? Does it get better the more times you watch it? Whatever you think, leave it in the comments below. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more content and hit the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a video. And next week wraps up Tim Burton month in a nice big, Christmas bow, where I review a film that he didn't direct, Nightmare Before Christmas. But as always, I'm Colby, this is my nerdy talk, and I'll see you in the next video.